Sprout Valley is the latest cozy farming game to arrive on the Nintendo Switch, and although this is a sponsored video, it's one that I've had my eye on for a while. As such, we'll also be giving away a free copy though, so that's nice, just leave your comments down below, and we'll choose someone at random. I'm reliably informed by the mastermind that is Glenn, that Sprout Valley was the original name for Stardew Valley before they decided to change it. So there's that little homage there, among other things that we'll see in the gameplay section. As always, you can actually save yourself 10% on your eShop credit for any purchases you make over at switchup.gg using code SWITCHUP. You'll get 5% instant and 5% back in coins. So what is Sprout Valley all about? And is it one you'll be interested in? Well, let's find out. So when it comes to the story, you play as Nico a young cat that has just moved to the Ostara Archipelago. It's just a case of Nico having lived in the city his whole life and wanting to move somewhere peaceful and make it his own. A nice touch included is when you do get to the island for the first time and open your letterbox, you'll find a letter in there that thanks all of the people that backed the game on Kickstarter. So in terms of gameplay, this is of course a farm life simulation game and you'll play as Nico as he lives his life every day on this small island. When you first start the game, you can choose from a few different island templates. I believe there were three in total. And once picked, you'll arrive there to begin your new life. There is a penguin character called Oslo who you'll interact with sometimes, mainly via walkie talkie. It's Oslo who sold you the property and their dialogue will sometimes move the story along. But for the most part, you'll be planting seeds, taking care of them, of course, until they grow, harvesting them and then selling them for money. What's slightly different about this game is because you are on an island, there isn't a shop or a town just off the way that you can visit. Instead, you have a small boat and what you can do is you can use this to then visit other islands that are part of the archipelago. Now, as far as I could see, these islands are procedurally generated. So every time you leave on your boat and leave the screen to a new island, it will look different from last time. Sometimes, for example, I found one that had a shop on it so I could buy different resources. In the case of the one I found, it was actually new hats that you could buy and you can then wear these via the wardrobe in your house. But generally, they are made up of a number of natural resources such as trees and bushes and you can then forage here, bringing home the fruit that you find or the timber, for example, and either selling it or using it for your daily life. Now, in order to travel, you must have what's called a travel supply pack with you and you can buy these via the small order book in your house. You can also buy seeds from here rather than having a more traditional shop in town and these will be delivered to your letterbox the next day. You can then obviously take them out and use them as you will. The letterbox is also where you put the stuff that you want to sell. You don't have a large shipping container, which is usually the way in such games. As I say, put it in the letterbox and the next day the money will be deposited to you. Each aspect of farming has a star system attached to it and the more you take on a particular task, the more you'll start to earn stars in these areas. This will allow you to unlock other things as you move on and you can check your progress in the options screen and you'll see how many stars you've acquired for each of these talents. There are also some in-game achievements to try to accomplish within this options screen, very similar to something like Animal Crossing in that the achievements are incremental, so it may be to catch 10 fish, say, and as soon as you've got 10, it'll go up to the next number. There are story objectives to complete and obviously move the story along, and a lot of this is based around having to improve the infrastructure of the basement of your house. Doing this will allow you to build certain machines, such as seed making machines early on, and you'll need to gather natural resources in order to do this. So things such as wood, for example, or stone that you can collect on your island or at the other islands around the archipelago, you can either use in their raw form to improve that infrastructure, or you can take them to your crafting table and turn them into proper timber or ingots, and then use those to create items to use around your island and decorate your home. As well as this, you can increase the size of your home and again, you do that using the order book within your house, once you have enough money, of course, and this will give you more scope and space, of course, to decorate. In terms of the controls, the X button will bring up the wheel of your tools that you can then cycle through, or you can just press L and R to move through them sequentially, and you can also press Y to bring up the items that are in your backpack. This is where things such as seeds will be kept, and actually, I did find the control system very useful in the way you could bring up that backpack with your seeds in, say, for example, lay the seeds in real time without having to close the backpack, meaning you could use more than one packet of seeds one after the other, and then move straight into something like using your watering can to water them without having to close all of the menus down. It's a bit difficult to explain, but it works very well in practice. It's very fluid, which is nice in such a game. One minor nitpick I would have with the controls, though, is it's quite difficult to just pick one 
of something. So for example, if you have a number of the travel supplies I mentioned stored in your chest and you just want to take one out to go in the boat for the day. As far as I could see at least, the only way I could do this would be to take all of them out, then drop one on the floor, put the rest back and pick the one back up. It's a bit fiddly and it'd be nice if that could be patched, unless I am missing something obvious and if that is the case then I do apologise. Yeah, nice one Glenn. Gameplay is really fun and you can also buy different upgrades like sprinklers from those shops to make water in your crops easier. And the levels that Glenn mentioned, well as your character levels up they become more proficient at farming. It means that you can water larger areas and it just cuts down the more mundane time. Tasks. There are loads of other items that you can find and craft like beehives, scarecrows, and you can even build bridges so that your island can expand and reach others. Visuals and performance, they're generally quite good. The game tends to run at 60 frames per second. I have noticed when I build my farm up very large, I do see some slowdown there. You don't notice it so much when you're playing, but when you shift to another island, visiting it, you will see that that's running at 60 and then moving back to yours, a slight drop there. The visual quality though and style I really enjoy. I think this artistic style works well, and although minimalist, it definitely has a charm to it. There are also some nice weather effects, such as fog, in which, by the way, loads of mushrooms will grow and you can harvest those up and sell them, and a thunderstorm storm with lightning bolts striking the ground. It just adds a bit of variety and I did notice there's different music attached to those weather effects, with the rain also being very useful on those days because you won't have to water your crops. And I noted that on the calendar you can actually see which days it's going to rain and uh, the weather forecast here is uh, actually accurate. So you can plan out when to go out on trips to other islands rather than worrying about watering crops and also you'll want to make sure that every area is filled with crops because you'll feel smug when you don't have to water them. The musical score is lovely, really catchy, nice and upbeat. My only negative here would be a little more variety would be nice. It is an experience I have preferred to play in handheld on my OLED Switch and there are a number of accessibility options as well which you don't usually see. You can actually change the size of the game, so the UI and the HUD which will also affect the text size, but moreover you can change the zoom level, so if you rather the game more zoomed out, as you'll see in most of the footage here, as that's the way I prefer, you can do that, or you can zoom right in and have things more close up. Sprout Valley retails at £16.19, but it currently has a huge sale, down to £4.49, that's 72% off, and that goes on all the way until October the 8th. If you even slightly like Stardew Valley, Animal Crossing, or uh cats, then you might enjoy this. Well, you definitely will enjoy it. It is single player only, it's only 128 megs to download. As far as longevity, I'm thinking you could easily spend 20 to 30 hours, and you have lots of little things like cosmetics that you can collect and customise your character's appearance and that storyline to keep things ticking over. So yeah, if you can find it on the sale while it goes on until October the 10th, definitely worth adding to your collection. So that's it for this video, hopefully it's been of some use. A big thanks as I said to Red Deer for sponsoring it, but when it's a game you're genuinely enjoying anyway, and is ridiculously cheap, yeah, so a pretty easy video to make I have to be honest. Hopefully the developers can implement a couple of those fixes we mentioned like being able to select individual items and also the random generation of the shop on the islands you visit can be a bit of a pain if you manage to not get one for about six visits but they're minor niggles when you think about the price and what you're getting. Let us know in the comments what you think as we say we're giving away some copies of this and as always a big thanks to all of you that enjoy the content. For all things Switch all the time keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya.